Hello, my name is Peter West with West Networks and welcome to our not unboxing episode of the Max Antenna Duo. There is no Antenna Duo here, I get that. But the point is, we have a BR2 Pro 5G. And this is one of the most popular products that Peplink has made that, to date. Dual 5G, gigabit capacity. I've got T-Mobile and AT&T in here, but I get these little tiny antennas. So if I wanted to put this on the roof of my building, or if I wanted to enhance it, I've got to figure out the antenna situation here. And so I, I, what I did just for just quick having fun is I've turned off the Verizon, so I'm running just T-Mobile, just so I can have an apples to apples guaranteed comparison. And I've got the BR2 Pro 5G with the stock antennas. So I'm gonna open up a speed test here. And now I am in, the, in my building. And in my building, we have zero cellular service. This is why I love testing here. It's so easy to go out where you're getting 1.3 gigabits of throughput and say, hey, look how good my antenna is. So we're getting nothing here. So I'm connected to the Wi-Fi on this unit, and I'm just gonna do a quick speed test. I don't know if Matt can see that or not, but let's see, I'm getting six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, I'm gonna tell you that is really good because my cell phone has no 5G service in this, sec in this area of the building. Um, and so we, I can't even do phone calls unless we're doing Wi-Fi. So I'm actually pretty impressed by this, but we're getting 12 down by 0.92 up, 0.78. Let's see what it says here. 12 by 0.73. So 12 down, three quarters of a meg up. Um, hopefully I'll remember that for, for later. Okay, so what I have uh, is the Max Antenna Duo. And this is Peplink's answer to outdoor, rooftop, watertight, awesome connectivity. Think of it as a dual 5G hotspot on steroids that you can mount uh, in the rain. Uh, this is an IP67 enclosure that you can put either two BR1 Mini 5Gs or one BR2 Pro 5G in this unit. It comes with th 3M tape. So literally, you could just stick this to the top of your RV, boom, give it power and you've got uh, dual bonded 5G. Because the BR2 has two Ethernet WANs, you could also put a Starlink right next to this and have Starlink and dual 5G with only one cable going down into your vehicle, which is gonna be power or Ethernet. Um, it comes with a pole mounting kit. Now I would assume this is a top of pole mounting kit. You could put on the side of a pole and make it you kind of like a directional antenna, I think. Then we're gonna get a whole bunch of screws to, to make sure that water doesn't get inside of our case. And I don't know if yours will come with an Allen wrench, but mine did. We're gonna get two watertight uh, glands. This is gonna let your ethernet or power in and ethernet or power out slash in. Two short ethernet cables. Okay, pole mount kit, which makes sense for our top of pole kit. So then I would bet you on the bottom of it, oh, look at that, see the four screws? So this goes like this, and then you can mount it. And then it looks like we have our, we have three glands. I've got one down here that looks like you could maybe go into a pole there. And then we're gonna have uh, two glands here, and then a third uh, vent here. So this is gonna be a pressure release vent um, if you decide to go up in space. So I'm gonna use my Allen wrench. There's two screws in it. Now, once again, I don't know how yours would come if you were to buy it, um, because this was played with by a technician before me. Usually these come with all the screws in them, but I, I don't know if you're gonna get those or not. So we'll, we'll see. But it's not that important. What's important is what you can do with it once you have it open. Okay. Now that I've got it open, oh, look at this. So you have this massive kind of heat sink slash metal plate and then just the, the antenna there. Um, 
And you can see there's an, okay, so this is ethernet. Look, there's an ethernet here. So I'm gonna plug in, that's gonna give ethernet there. Oh, look at this, and these two are also ethernet. So you have ethernet, ethernet, ethernet already mounted, and then you can just do ethernet out here for PoE input. So I'll bet you PoE. So to, for me to test this, I'll need to plug it into my switch and power it. That'll be kind of fun. Okay, so let's see how to make this thing work. So I'm gonna take these off. I've got two Wi-Fi. Ye yellow's my Wi-Fi. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cellular and one GPS. And then you can actually see, I don't know if you can see this or not. There's several layouts here. And I'll bet you if I grab my BR1 mini here, there's a layout. Look at that, that supports the BR1 mini. So we have a BR1 mini right there. We've got something right there. I'm assuming this is for the power, the, the max power splitter. Right there. And then you've got something huge right there, which I think is too big for this. Let me turn this off. Let's see. Oh, look at that. That fits. And it's, it, there's like a little etched outline and then you can see that there's probably a power supply that's gonna go right here, an optional power splitter tool. Okay, so let's hook this up and see how it works. So this is gonna go like this. There we go. And now I'm gonna have my eight cellulars, which are gonna be a nightmare to install. Tighten that down a little bit. So we got a whole bunch of screws here and they all look, okay, you have a bunch of long ones and then a bunch of short ones. I'm gonna assume the short ones are for this. So let's take, and I've, I've had people suggest or worry about heat um, of these routers. These are industrial rated routers for 150 degrees. Um, we've had these outside uh, in plastic NEMA enclosures and metal NEMA enclosures. We've had them in near direct sunlight. I run these in my backpack and put them out in the sun. I, I power the vents outside in these. I mean, they can get hot, don't get me wrong. Uh, and I don't know if Public would endorse me on, on saying running them outside, but um, I, I have, especially sometimes when you're doing outdoor events. Okay, that was a lot of cables. And hopefully Matthew will fast forward through some of that for us. Now, one thing I will say about these enclosures is the SIM cards are right here. If you need to swap these out, that's not gonna be super fun. There's two way, three things you can do for SIM cards. One, mount them physically and pray you don't have to change them very often. Two, you could uh, use SIM injector, so you basically have ethernet, plug it in, you can do a SIM injector at your switch and then get, um, send the router SIM cards via the SIM injector. By far, one of the easiest way to deal with physical SIM cards in a hard to reach router. And then number three would be using eSIMs. So you could push eSIMs to this router. Now the routers already have PEPSIM, which is built in, that's AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, or any uh, one of like, I think 50 or 55 countries right now where we have the PEPSIM. And so you can buy global data for these um, through that, or you can push your own AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, or other NVNO via InControl and the SIM inject, or in the eSIM controls. So now I'm gonna snag this handy ethernet, and I'm gonna plug one into my WAN one slash LAN. That's gonna be my POEN. And then I'll plug the other one into uh, LAN 4. I don't know. What. No, I'll do WAN 2, because why not? That way if I do one hook up to a Starlink. Oh, look, one's longer than the other. Um, okay, so then I'm going to plug the long one into, this is going to be left or right, if it's upside down. And I'll plug the short one, WAN 2. So I've got WAN, LAN 
slash WAN. This is my PoE input, and then this is just a WAN port. Put this back on top. And I'm gonna do what the engineers did. I'm gonna put in just two screws, just so you guys don't have to watch me put in a whole bunch of screws. But for water tightness, you should put in all the screws and get a drill. It'll be way faster. Right, Peter John? Okay, so that's tightened down now. So I could have wired this. Oh, that's probably what the long one's for. Look, whoop. Yeah, but I don't want to use that one. So then I can come over here, unscrew these caps. Look at these, see there's just watertight caps. And now I've got two ethernet ports. Look at that. So then I have the watertight connectors that I could just plug ethernet in and watertight these. If you're mounting these outside, you will fry these ports if you don't watertight them. So let me show you, like don't, don't mount these outside without a watertight connector. So the way we've done the watertight connectors now is that's big enough. Look at that, it's big enough for ethernet. So you don't have to like be all crazy and let me see if I have an ethernet cord here. Here we go. Okay, so got the connector, put the ethernet through. Pop out the little uh, red doohickey there. Put the cable gland on there. Push this through. And I believe I said I'm gonna do my left one. So that's, this is my power. Plug that in. Then all I have to do is screw this on. So Pebbling's really made it a lot easier on the new ones versus the old glands. Then you can take the, the red, slide it in, then tighten it down. Make sure that's nice and tight. And now you're watertight. Now technically you're not watertight because that's there, so I'm gonna go ahead and screw this on. And then this one came with a gland. So you gotta be careful like this one had a gland on it. So take the one you're not using and cover this one here. Otherwise, once again, this will not be watertight and you will fry the router and get water in the system. And then we'll be processing an RMA and then we'll be telling you, hey, sorry, it's got water in it. Um, that's not RMAable. Um, and we don't wanna do that to you. So make sure all the, everything, all the screws are in Make sure the connections are in, and then make sure your gland is watertight. Now I can do this. Plug it into my switch to give it some power. And just so I don't screw stuff up, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug all these. There we go. Now I did just screw it all down, so unlike, or just like you, I have no clue if this is working, so we'll wait a few seconds and see if it comes online. Okay, so it's booted up. I'm gonna to connect to the 5G and Wi-Fi that I created here, connected. And I see it connected to T-Mobile 5G. Uh, Verizon is still waiting to connect right there. And yeah, I'm connected. So let's do a speed test and see if it's any different. So remember my last one was 12.78 by 0.73. And let's see what this one is. Okay, so I don't know if you can zoom in on this, Matt, because I don't want to be a liar, but same router, same SIM cards, same exact location, 71.3 down by 4.6 up. So I have changed nothing other than putting it in this. That is a 7X improvement on the download and a whatever 0.75 and going into 4.61 is. So on the upload. So what, well, I mean, that would be 0.75 is 1.5, that'd be two. And then three would be four. And then 4.5 would be six. So six times improvement on upload and a seven X improvement on the download, six X improvement on the download. So that's not bad. Sitting inside a building where I have zero cellular service. I am 
thoroughly impressed uh, with uh, the throughput. Now, I will tell you, I'm not surprised at the 82G. Uh, I tell people this all the time, that when the internet sucks, this makes it suck less. Um, that's broadband-ish, I mean, we're almost at 100 megabit. Okay, so going from the stock router that's not waterproof, not rugged, not built for dust and moisture, to a IP67 watertight enclosure where the router is powered by PoE with a pole mount kit or a 3M sticky top kit, we're now able to take this router and put it outside, giving you better capacity, better throughput, and more resiliency. But also think about mobile health cl clinics or ambulances. You just stick this on the roof and you've got bonded 5G or dual 5G. And then with the ability to have this other ethernet connection here, I could even plug in a Starlink if I want to or other internet connection. And so I could, you know, I, heck, I could put two of these side by side if I wanted to. Um, and so the idea is that you have the ability to ruggedize uh, or outdoor and protect your device while also increasing capacity. Just in this one little tiny room, we were able to show a 6X improvement in performance on T-Mobile, which was absolutely amazing and a perfect demonstration of how amplified antennas increase that connectivity capability. Quick little video showing you how to set up the Max Antenna Duo, the pole mount kit, the 3M sticky, and then once again, always make sure you watertight those connections. We've gotten RMAs in the past and people have forgotten to watertight those connections and then it fries it and doesn't look great for anybody. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great day. The cool thing is Matthew's really good at Photoshop and so he's gonna make this part go super fast and most likely just delete this part of the audio anyways so I can say whatever I want. <laughs> And once again, Matthew will just fast forward all this and it'll go really fast. So I can say whatever I want. He plays music or something and it'll be like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and it's like, and it looks like I'm a super robot. It's gonna be some bloopers at the end of this.